Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, Chatting with Chops. If you're new here, my name is Karen, and I try and make fun and entertaining videos that might teach you something. Today, we're gonna try and make double chocolate mummies. It's a recipe I found in one of the magazines, um, and I will put the whole recipe down in the description box below, as well as what magazine it came out of. Today, of course, I'm gonna try and make them vegan, because that's what I do, and we are going to uh, get started in just a minute, so come along and let's see what happens. It's Friday and I'm on fire. Okay, so the first thing that they've asked us to do is to whisk together all purpose flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, and salt. And so I've put that all together in a bowl and set that aside. And then what it's also asked you to do is in a large mixing bowl, put two sticks of butter. Of course, we've used plant-based butter. And let's see, one cup of granulated sugar. So we've got that in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically blend that up until it's smooth. And it's saying that takes about three minutes. So let's, let's go ahead and get that going. And So let's look at our batter and see what it looks like. There you go. All right. The next thing they want us to do is to mix in the eggs, which again, because it's vegan, we're going to be using unsweetened applesauce. I just find using the unsweetened a little bit easier. That way I, I'm already tamping, tampering with the recipe. I don't want to add a bunch of sugar that I didn't expect to add either. That in there and mix that up. We've put the applesauce in there and now it wants you to put in your flour mixture and you just put it in and slowly until it's incorporated in. And So because we're going on this journey together, the next thing that the recipe asks you to do is to put your dough out on a piece of parchment paper and then put another piece of parchment paper on it and roll it out. I'm a little bit concerned because that's a lot of dough. I think I want to cut that in half and just work with like half of it. So I'm just going to take half at a time. And because uh, my house has a tendency to be a little bit warm, I'm gonna stick the other half in the fridge. And so I'm just gonna work with one half of it for right now. All right, so we've got half of our piece of dough. And it says to put another piece of parchment paper on top of it. And then get your rolling pin and roll it out. And I have these nifty little, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call them adapters. They come in different sizes. Got this as a Christmas present one time, um, but it basically makes it where it will go ahead and measure out the dough for you. So the recipe says they want it a fourth of an um, inch thick. So I have these on here. Sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. So you just kind of have to work with that. But so we're gonna roll out our dough with a fourth of an inch between the parchment paper. I know this parchment paper is being really loud too, so. And basically the 
parchment paper, I can tell you this much, the parchment paper is just here to keep it from um, sticking to your, your rolling pin. So we're going to roll this out a fourth of an inch thick. So we've rolled out our dough a fourth of an inch thick. We're going to take off this piece of the parchment paper and we'll use it again on the other half of the, the dough that we're working with. So we have it as pretty thick. And so now it tells you you're supposed to take your little floured gingerbread cookie cutters and cut them in while it's still on the parchment paper. So just push those down, bring that back up. The flour keeps it from sticking to the dough. And I have a, a little girl, looks like she has a dress on. And you just keep pressing those down until you have all of your dough used up. I'm not sure if the angle of the camera, if you can tell, but I'm just basically fitting each cookie cutter into the best spot. so I can get the most cookies out of it. Try not to cut anybody's little feet off. And you're gonna be using the, the excess that you don't have room for. You'll be using that in later other cookies. So let's see, we can fit one more. All right, so now what you're supposed to do is just take a regular cookie sheet and slide it up underneath. And we're going to put this whole thing in the refrigerator for 20 minutes just to let it chill, which should make them come out pretty easy. But you can see there I've got all my little cookies cut out. And I'm going to stick it in the fridge and I'll see you in about 20 minutes. All right, so it's been the 20 minutes and now we have our little cookies. And what we want to do from here is take, obviously, we have our cookie sheet ready to go in the oven, and we need to take our cookies from this cookie sheet, just the cookies. So I'm going to try just laying them on the counter and see if I can just kind of peel around. Again, you guys are going along this journey with me. I have not made this recipe before and it's new and different. And I figured this was a, a great way to review a recipe with you. So let's see. All these little bits and pieces we'll be able to make into other cookies. I don't try not to smoosh them. I'm going to put a little, little bit of flour on my spatula and see if that helps. Right. See if that makes it where they can... Ah, oh, yes, much better. Put flour on your spatula. There you go. Tip number one from this video today. But basically, I'm just going to... I'm not going to put very many of them on this cookie sheet because I don't know how, since I haven't made this recipe before, I don't know if it's going to spread out or what they're going to do. It says you're supposed to cook them on a 350 oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit oven, and then you cook them from anywhere to 12 to 15 minutes. And it says until they feel sandy, which again, I'm going to say I have not done this recipe before. I don't really know what they mean by that, but I'm thinking we're going to find out. And I'm just going to brush off a little bit of this flour just with my finger that we use to cook the, cut the cookies out easily. I doubt it's enough to make it taste any different, but there you go. I'm going to put those in the oven, 350 degrees for... 12 to 15 minutes and I will let y'all know what they look like when they come out. Well here they are after 15 minutes in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven 
they look great to me. The recipe said you're supposed to take them out when they feel sandy, which I guess, how much to, to go with that, that theory. Uh, you may have to tinker with the time a little bit while you're baking your cookies. I have an older oven, so it sometimes likes to change the times a little bit on me. But we're going to keep baking these until we're all done. And then you're supposed to let them cool completely. And then come back and we can frost them at that time. So I'll see you back here in just a minute. We have our double chocolate mummy cookies. And at this point is when you're supposed to make your glaze to make the mummies. We have our little candied eyes that we're going to start putting on them, which I think are going to be absolutely adorable. And um, I think what I'm going to do, just to see if this will work, is I'm just going to take a little bit of the glaze on a spoon. And it says you're supposed to kind of dip the little eyes in there and then just put them on. And just drop me some eyeballs everywhere. Uh-oh. That's a lot. So let's see how that's going to work. Just put a little bit. It's kind of a, I lost that one. See, it's kind of a trial basis. You just kind of have to figure out how things are going to work. Okay. So I'm just taking the little candied eyeballs. I poured some on the counter because my fingers have got some of the glaze on them and I don't want to get it all over the package in case I don't use all of the eyeballs. But you're supposed to just kind of, that one wants to stick to me more than it wants to stick to the, the cookie. And I'm just going through and putting little eyeballs on all of my cookies. and just keep going until you're all done. So you see I've got my, my little googly eyes on all of them. They are uh, a little bit bigger than I thought they would be, but you know, you, you use what you can find. This is by any means, no, not all the cookies. I have more cookies over here. I'm just wanting to show you um, what we're doing. And I have a little like glob tester here because I want to see how this is supposed to kind of swirl across. I don't want it to be, yeah, so you really kind of have to get a good little motion going, but that's kind of how it's supposed to go. So let's see if we can get kind of a, a swirl going. How about that? It's supposed to kind of look like they have their little mummy, mummy rags on. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm using a piece of the parchment paper that we used earlier to roll out the dough, but they definitely tell you to put parchment paper up underneath. Um, I guess if you don't mind making your countertop a disaster, you could do this on your counter, but I'm not really, uh, as you can see, it's still getting on my countertop, but I'm not really interested in uh, making my counter a disaster. to get it kind of a swish and swirl going, you kind of have to give it a little bit of oomph. What do y'all think? Think that looks good? All right. Well, I'm going to do the rest of them and see how they turn out. And then when it's all done, uh, we'll come back and, and review whether this was a good success or not. So I'll see you back in just a minute. Well, they turned out fantastic. These are the double chocolate mummy cookies from the magazine that I read. We have made them vegan and I think they've turned out fantastic. They taste wonderful. It's a chocolate cocoa cookie with some confectionery icing on it. And 
they was definitely successful making into vegan. I didn't have any trouble with that whatsoever. I think they turned out really good. They're very cute, and um, I think that they definitely will uh, go well with your Halloween party treats. I'm sending them to my daughter uh, for a Halloween treat. So uh, I definitely would say that this was a success in the overall bake of the recipe as well as making them vegan. So I hope y'all have enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, offer any suggestions or comments or questions down below. I'm happy to, to take any suggestions or thoughts or maybe um, future recipes you'd like me to try and make vegan, but I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thank you!